The school year will likely start under the highest threat level for COVID. Harris County is back at red, which means the risk of catching coronavirus without a vaccine is high and you're safer at home. Let's bring in Dr. David Purse with the Houston Health Department. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. I know it's a busy time right now for you. Obviously, you advise a judge before a big move like this. Why was it so important to raise that threat level right now at this particular time? Uh, so to be clear, I work for the city, not the county, so I don't advise the judge, but she does have advisors and she I support her move because we're seeing really high numbers of patients requiring hospitalization that are infected with COVID to the point where the hospitals are just absolutely full and uh, it, they're, they're overflowing with patients. So I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, we just need to listen to the message. Dr. Paris, I listened to the press conference yesterday and you said that hospitals are at their breaking point. And if you get sick, whether it's with COVID or whether you have a heart attack or a stroke, there is a concern right now that you might have to go out of state to get care. Is that correct? So what we're seeing is that acutely, like when somebody calls 911, we're, we're getting to hospitals, but they commonly what we're finding is the waiting rooms are full. The emergency departments are full, generally with patients that are already admitted to the hospital, but there's just nowhere to move them upstairs. So you can imagine there's not an empty bed to bring that new patient into. Uh, so a lot of times if people are, you know, really critically ill, for instance, a heart attack patient, often we can bypass the emergency department, take them right to the cath lab, or a car accident patient, we can bypass the emergency department, take them right to the operating room. But then they're stuck there because, again, there's no intensive care unit bed, there's no bed upstairs. That's the situation that we're in right now. It's really very dangerous. All right, let's talk about who is at highest risk here. Are we talking about unvaccinated people? Are you also concerned about any breakthroughs for people who have received a vaccine? Yeah, so this is a really important question. And I think that we get a little bit of tunnel vision on the fact that as younger people become infected with COVID, they tend to not do badly. Well, they're doing badly enough that this morning in Harris County alone, we have over 1,200 patients admitted to hospitals uh, suffering from COVID, 1,200. So this idea that while they're younger people, they're doing well, well, apparently that's not actually accurate. There are a lot of people that are doing quite poorly um, and they're requiring hospitalization. But also all the other regular illnesses that normally occur, they need those same hospital beds. And so this is the crux. This is the, the, where the overload is coming from. And so whether you're a COVID patient and, you're, and we are seeing some breakthrough of vaccinated folks, and I really wish that we would not pay so much attention because when you look at the numbers, the number of people that have vaccinated that are getting ill, yes, it's, and it's making the news, but it's a tiny, tiny fraction compared to the huge number of people who are unvaccinated. So in the hospitals, as many as 95% of the hospitalized patients are unvaccinated. So if you're vaccinated, your chances of getting in trouble are greatly reduced. And nobody ever said the vaccine was 100% protective. So this is exactly what we should have expected to see. Dr. Purse, I want to ask you, uh, going back to the crisis at the hospitals, are, are there plans to open a field hospital? Have you guys talked about that? The NRG one at one time was not really needed, but do you think we will move in that direction shortly? Yeah, so that's another great question. And so there are, we are having those conversations. We do have some equipment. Harris County was uh, thoughtful and got some equipment. We've, they've got a warehouse. They've actually got a place where we could potentially set up. The problem is we don't have any staff. There's a tremendous nursing shortage that's going on, not only here locally, but across the nation. And if you consider when Houston gets hit by a hurricane and we need nurses, we can call across the nation and nurses will come to Houston. That's not available right now because so many communities across the nation are dealing with the same nursing shortage that nobody has any nurses uh, to free up and send to Houston. So we're kind of on our own. It's not a question of equipment or space. It's really a question of medical personnel. And we talk a lot about nurses, but it's also respiratory therapists and, and uh, pharmacists and physicians. There's a overall medical professional shortage, predominantly nurses. A lot of doctors are saying we're more vulnerable now than we've ever been, yet still no state mask mandate has come up again. What would be your thought and, and your advice to anybody who's on the fence about whether they should put that mask back on? We know people don't want to, but at the end of the day, what, what do you really want them to consider? Yeah, so let me say a couple of things. One is that you know the idea that we can't have a mask mandate, um, I've, I've never heard of the government before saying outlawing a safety measure because that's basically what the masks are. This is like saying it's illegal to wear seatbelts. I'm completely confused by this. But number two, if to answer your question, when we look at the previous waves that we had before there was vaccine, the reason we were able to mitigate those waves was because people wore masks, they socially distanced, they didn't go to large gatherings. Those things really, really work. 
you really only want to do them until there's a vaccine available. Well, we've had a vaccine available for six months now. Now our problem is that we've got half the population that doesn't want to take the vaccine. So if the half the population continues to refuse to take the vaccine, then that means we all need to go back to wearing masks, social distancing, and not going to large gatherings, or this is just going to continue. So I was going to ask you, do you see it improving anytime soon, Dr. Percy? You're measuring the virus load in our wastewater, and you've seen a tremendous increase in that. So what, does, what should that tell people? Well, what it should tell people is, A, the virus is extremely um, prevalent within the community. And as we know, because this Delta variant spreads so much more easily than the previous Alpha variant, that it's going to spread like a, it's a faster wildfire, if you will. So it's spreading more aggressively into more communities. And so what I foresee happening is that eventually everyone will either be vaccinated or have caught the virus and then have some immunity for that. Now, if, if the, with the Delta variant being so contagious, that means that for all those folks who are eventually going to catch it, they're all probably going to catch it around the same time. That's what that's what I fear that we are seeing happening now is that we're going to have so many people catch the virus all around the same time that we're going to break the back of the healthcare system. And that's already occurring as we talked a couple minutes ago. And to put this in perspective, the wastewater uh, data generally predicts what we're going to see in positivity rate by about two weeks. And that then predicts what we see in hospitalizations by about two weeks. And this is what we've seen with the last uh, two waves and we're seeing it now. So we saw the wastewater start uh, creeping up about uh, six, seven weeks ago. It was about two weeks after that that we saw the positivity rates start to go up. And then right after that, the hospitalizations started going up, just like we had seen before. So let's bring it to a little bit more recent. Uh, we used the July 6, 2020, which was the first big wave, that, that peak is 100%, just as an arbitrary numbers. That was 100%. In January, we got to 200 and, um, uh, 230%, I'm sorry, 250%, 250% of what it had been the previous uh, July. So three weeks ago, we were at 231%. And last week, I'm sorry, two weeks ago, we were at uh, 320%. So with that huge increase that we're seeing just within the last couple of weeks, and that predicts what we're gonna see a few weeks from now in terms of hospitalizations, unfortunately, I don't see any relief for the hospitals coming over the next three weeks at least. All right, Dr. Purse. A lot of grim information coming into us, but thank you for keeping us up to date and we hope to keep checking in with you through all of this. Thank you.